Why would a government support organizations with completely opposing goals? The SCP Foundation is an organization devoted to the containment of SCPs, dangerous supernatural anomalies or individuals that pose a threat to humanity's existence. It functions as a privately owned entity, receiving funding and support from wealthy donors and governments around the world. However, it operates without governmental oversight or restriction, allowing it much freedom without accountability. In recent years, another group has risen to prominence, referred to as the GOC, Global Occult Coalition. While similar to the SCP Foundation in its decree to protect humanity, it has fundamentally different methods and goals. The entity is devoted to the destruction and termination of all supernatural anomalies and individuals, regardless of threat level or necessity. This stems from an just-in-case mentality, reasoning that these anomalies can never be fully understood and as such will always pose a hazard. Unlike the Foundation, it is subject to governmental oversight by the United Nations, making it far more organized but restricted in its operations and procedures. These two groups have often clashed with each other due to their opposing outlooks and goals, which has occasionally led to one stepping on the other's turf. This has resulted in violent confrontations at times, which potentially makes a situation worse. Given the situation, it would make the most sense for governments such as the US to pick one over the other. What would make governments continue to support groups with competing goals when the stakes are so high? A government is not a single unified entity, particularly elected governments. Government priorities change over time, often swinging back and forth between different ends of a particular country's political range. Not every policy put in place under one administration is repealed under the next, even if that policy would not have been passed by the new administration. Additionally, at any given time there may be faction opposed to a policy, a faction supporting the policy, and factions indifferent to it. If around 30% of legislators want policy A but are opposed to policy B, 30% would be persuaded to vote for either or both A and B in exchange for votes on unrelated policies, and 30% actively oppose policy A but support policy B, both policies can be passed with greater than 50% support. Even if A and B are not consistent. Even in countries where policy is largely determined by a single executive, the executive will usually have advisors with differing opinions, and the full implications of the policies each advisor is pushing may not be made clear to the executive by the advisor pushing it, and indeed, may not be made entirely clear to the advisor, who is also informed by a set of people under him, etc. In practice, a single government is not, and cannot be, entirely consistent. And that's ignoring the unconscious inconsistency of individuals, like the atheist who insists there is no supernatural, but knocks on wood when someone talks about having an accident. 